pandemonium reigns. Yo, what's up, friends and family? Welcome to Pandemonium Reigns. I am your host today, flying solo. It's your boy, Dan. Uh, Michael said something about work or something. Absolutely ridiculous. But thank you so much for uh, tuning in with me today. I got some stuff, excuse me, a topic that I want to talk about today on this on this Orange Cast. As of noon today, uh, four-star quarterback Jake Merklinger has committed to the Vols. And I just want to come on here and talk about why this is uh, a really big deal. But before I do that, would love for you guys to uh, follow follow us on the, all the social medias, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, make sure you're subscribed everywhere you get your podcast. Like this video, comment. Would love to know your thoughts as well, especially if you are a Tennessee fan listening to this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and let me tickle those ears. Hope I do a great job without my boy today. Uh, wish him well, RIP, as he uh, gets his daily job done. Me? I'm on my lunch break. It's a good day. It's a good day to be a Vol, is what it is. Now, I don't want to go down this road of, are the Vols back? I don't really want to have that conversation, because I think I can answer that pretty quickly, and the answer is no. I think that is a lofty um uh, statement i think that is a uh, high praise and you got to do more than what what was it seven and six year one and double digit wins year two we're gonna really find out you know who the vols are coming into this 23 season as hypo enters year three which a lot of us are extremely excited about because we're gonna get to see a new quarterback at the helm and and what can be done. A lot of praise is being made of Joe Milton. We are fresh off the absence of Hendon Hooker, who is, um, man, going down as one of the greatest of all time. He is entering into that Peyton Manning category of, of Tennessee quarterbacks. Legend, absolute legend. Hate the way that his career has ended the way it did. But I've already gotten off on a rabbit trail. That's not what we're talking about. But maybe it is. Whatever. Jake Merklinger out of Savannah, Georgia, four-star quarterback, has committed to the Vols at noon today. Six at three, 200 pounds. Chose the Vols over North Carolina, Georgia, and Michigan State. Now, Merklinger ranks Merklinger, Merklinger ranks as the number 66 player in the on on three rankings, which I'm going to be referencing these guys a lot and a little bit of 247. Don't listen. If you follow re recruiting, don't pay any attention to ESPN. What an absolute joke. Just as bad as their app. Uh, anyway, that's beside the point. And let me just clarify. I am not a scouting analyst. I'm not a, I'm not a reporter. Not my job. Not what I do. I'm just here to talk about it. just want to talk about it. Now, I have been around football for a very long time played at the high school and college level, do know a little bit. But anyway, moving on, going to be referencing on three here. So he also tabs as the number seven overall quarterback and the ninth, uh, or excuse me, number nine player in the state of Georgia coming again out of the Savannah area. <clears throat> now, over the last three seasons, Mr. Jake Merklinger has thrown for 6,607 yards, 75 touchdowns, and adding 690 yards rushing, 20 more scores. It's a good day to be a Vol, y'all. It's a good day. Now, I want to talk a little bit as we get into Mr. Merklinger's commitment here. You know, maybe the positive and negatives to why North Carolina, why Georgia, and why Michigan State. I just want to touch on that before we really dive into the, the, the Tennessee lens to this thing. I think North Carolina as a finalist for him makes a lot of sense. You know, Chapel Hill's not too far away from Savannah, Georgia. And you got you got Mac Brown at the helm, who not many people have won at, at North Carolina, right? Other than the name escapes me, Butch Davis. And they, but you had that whole not going to class thing. Anyway, beside the point. Think about what Mac Brown has done with guys like Sam Howell and now Drake May, who is potentially going to be a Heisman finalist going into the 23 season, had an excellent 22 campaign. I'm wondering 
if the departure of Phil Longo, who is now headed to Wisconsin to be on that Luke Fickle staff, if that has anything to do with it, or maybe if Mac Brown is older in age and maybe Jake's thinking, I just don't know how much longer he's going to be there, you know, I don't know. However, I do think North Carolina makes a lot of sense with, with what Mac Brown has done in his time at Chapel Hill. Why Georgia? I think Georgia also makes a lot of sense. I think it makes sense in a different light, though. I think it makes sense because you're not really going to be asked to do as much at a place like Georgia as you would Tennessee, where you're going to be asked. I mean, the quarterback is going to be asked a lot of. The quarterback is going to be asked a lot of in a place like North Carolina. All right? It's going to be very quarterback-driven. Is that the case at Georgia? I don't think so. Now, you got Mike Bobo, or is it Mike Bobo? Whatever. It's Bobo coming in, coming back, in which Mike and I just talked about on the last Pandemonium Rage podcast episode. Go check that out if you haven't. But they're going to be a lot more balanced, I believe, and he's just not going to have to shoulder as much because of the surrounding talent. And again, I'm not knocking Georgia, I'm not, not not doing that. I just think it's an easier ride, right? Say what you will about that. Here's the one that does not make, make sense to me in his Final Four. Michigan State. I think Mel Tucker is an attractive personality. You know, Mel Tucker has done really well in the transfer portal. But outside of that, I just don't know how this makes a lot of sense. I went and pulled Peyton Thorne, his numbers at Michigan State, and I just kind of wiped the 2020 season because, he I mean, he's got some stats. I'm not even sure he was the starter then. Couldn't tell you. Don't know. 2021, though, Peyton Thorne under center for, for Michigan State. The difference between 2021 and 2022 it's so plainly obvious. It's it's on it's on their record. It's written on their record. It's written on their hallways. It's written in his stat sheets. Check this out. The difference between 2021 and 2022 is <clears throat> Kenneth Walker. Check this out. 2021, he had 389 attempts, and he was good for 27 touchdowns and 10 score and 10 picks. Okay, not bad. That's a solid year, 3,200 yards. Pretty dang good. 2022, where there's no Kenneth Walker in the backfield anymore. He's only got two less attempts, 387 attempts as opposed to 389 before. So they're still balanced, right? But he's got 19 touchdowns and 11 picks. So the productivity for him just wasn't there. Dan, why are you mentioning this? Because... I don't think that Michigan State's offense is going to be able to flourish, flourish, I said that funny, do well unless they've got an elite running back. The quarterback, the quarterback as far as the attempts numbers go, the burden was the same, but the productivity was not. 2,600 yards as opposed to 3,200 yards, 27 scores as opposed to 19 scores. Say what you want. And another reason that... Michigan State in his final four, maybe this was just a decoy, you know. Maybe he just wanted to throw something in there to throw everybody off. And if he did, then mission complete, right? But he says in his in in his interview, and I'm not I'm not real sure if this interview took place, you know, right after his commitment. I haven't had a chance to see the video yet. You know, he's only committed about an hour and a half ago at this point, at the time, at the time of this recording. But he said this, and this is why Michigan State doesn't make any sense to me. He said, weird. Or excuse me, that's my writing. <clears throat> he says, for me, it's always been a dream to play in the SEC. I'm from the South. Playing in the SEC, I feel every kid in the South wants to do that. You're playing at the highest level of college football, and you're playing in front of 100,000 fans every Saturday. So why is Michigan State on your list then? Makes no, no sense. Now let's talk about why this is big for the Volunteers. Huge. Absolutely huge. And you're thinking, Dan, uh, it can't be that big. You just signed the five-star quarterback in last year's class. And Nick, Nico, here's my attempt to say this, Iyamavaya. Okay. <laughs> Let's pretend. I'm just going to call him Nico. I'm never going to use his last name. 
But Dan, you just signed Nico, who was the the number one player in the country last year, according to people like on three, right? Five star. Like, why do you even need Jake Merklinger? Okay. Can we yeah, get a quarterback with a normal name? I really like Milton and Hooker. So easy to say. Merklinger and Iamavaya. Whatever. <clears throat> Never gonna be able to do that. So the reason, first reason that this is big is because we're we're really early in this this recruiting cycle. Um, and he is leading the way for this recruiting class. Quarterback is the most important position on the football field, right? If if you're on offense, it's protect the quarterback. If you're on defense, it's get to the quarterback, right? This game revolves around this position. And now you've got that recruit, that commit out of the way. And sometimes it's these guys who go and start really pushing and recruiting other players, highly recruited players uh, that are in their class. And I'm going to get to uh, a little bit, or I'm going to get to some other guys who are in this class already who are committed uh, it, it, towards the end of this episode. <clears throat> but that's big, man. You, you've got this out of the way. We're, so, we're, we're in March, for crying out loud. Yeah, March 30th. At the time of this recording, that's big. Now, now you've got you've got him. I mean, he's not signed yet, and I understand that there's a long time until signing day, and that's a whole another conversation. They need to move. They need to move signing day. But now he can go and, and recruit, and it sounds like he is all in. I'm going to read you some words from him in a little bit, but it sounds like he's all in. So, another reason that this is big. Second reason this is big. This is big. These are the types of commitments that bring you back. Again, I have already said. I don't think that Tennessee is back yet. I think there's still more to do. I think there's still more to prove. You have to be able to stand in the ring with, with the Blue Bloods and the powerhouses for a significant amount of time. And we've done it for one season. Okay? But these are the commitments that, that, that allow you to stay in the ring, that allow you to stay in the fight. These are the type of commitments that allow you to annually contend for division titles, for conference titles, for hopefully playoff chances, okay? Now, I, I do understand that we're probably looking at pods as opposed to divisions in the very near future, but you get my point. These are the type of the commitments that, that do that. It is our second big quarterback com commitment, back-to-back right, -back years, last year being Nico, this year or this year being Jake. And, and, and think about what Coach Heupel has done with – with a Hendon Hooker, if you go back in time, going into the 21 season, where Hooker didn't show up until the spring, if I remember right, and I, I believe Joe Joe showed up in June. Joe arrived later. But Heupel only had him for that short of time, and look at what he was able to do with Hooker in that 21 season. 34 touchdowns, three picks, and he didn't even play the whole year. I mean, he didn't he didn't win that job until Joe got hurt. In Knoxville when they were hosting Pitt. But look at what he did in that amount of time. Now you've got, for example, Nico, who's going to be on the bench. I mean, this job is Joe's. Let's be serious. Who's going to be able to sit and 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 watch and learn and, and get developed from Coach Heupel on the sideline and underneath Joe. Think about what can happen. And and Okay, you get my point. I need to move on. Here's another reason why this is big. This is going to add depth to our quarterback room for that 2024 season. I understand that a lot of time or that a there's a lot of time between here and now, between now and the 24 season. I understand that a lot of things can take place. I understand that the transfer portal window is going to open and close about 900 times before that happens. I get it. But we have to assume that he's here, right? So the 2024 room as of right now, I understand the ludicrousness of my conversation, but just bear with me. But as of right now, it's Nico and it's Jake. Yes, you're going to have Gaston Moore, who will have one year left of eligibility. And the, and the great thing about Gaston Moore is, for one, he always reminds me of that character from, oh, what is that Disney movie? Beauty and the Beast. I think they have the same name, whatever. I don't watch Disney movies. <clears throat> Gaston Moore, the, the positive with Gaston Moore is that he knows the system. So if the worst case scenario absolutely happens with Joe getting hurt, Nico not being ready or whatever, 
Gaston's going to be thrusted in there, and it's going to be serviceable this year. But going into next year, I mean, it's Gaston Moore and then Navy Schuler, who's probably never going to see the field in his time at Tennessee. It's just, it's just probably not going to happen. And it's and it's not a knock on him or anything, but it's just probably never going to happen. So now, what the with the addition of of Jake Merklinger. Nico is going to feel some pressure from this, and he should. Somebody's going to be challenging him for his job, and he should be challenged. I am a firm believer that competition breeds success. Competition breeds success. If nobody is breathing down Nico's neck, he's like, man, I got this. I'm good, right? But now there's pressure. It forces him to work. It forces him to, to push himself. So several reasons there why... This is a good day to be a Tennessee fan, y'all. This is this is a big commitment. Now, it's not getting as much attention and and media time as Nico's commitment, which I believe was about this time last year. Probably because Nico's a, a a big cool name out of California, five star, right? All that stuff. You know, Jake's from the South. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's because we've got. You know, a, a deep, deeper quarterback room now. I'm not sure, but that's beside the point. I would like to read to you the scouting reports from on three and from two four seven. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a scout. I'm not a, I'm not an analyst. I'm a football fan. I'm a youth pastor. I do work with teenagers for a living. This is my job. This is what I do. And I also do want to point out that I fully understand that we just never know on these guys until they take the field, right? But you know what? We've been down for a long time, so I'm going to get excited. And if you have a problem with that, turn me off. I'm kidding. Subscribe. The report from On3 says this. Jake is an accurate mobile passer with a strong feel for the game early on in his high school career. Among the more accurate top quarterbacks in the 2024 cycle, yeah, yeah. Completing over 70% of his passes as a sophomore. It's big time, y'all. It's big. I don't care what level you're playing at. Sophomore, that's a tall task. He's comfortable navigating the pocket. Sees the field well. Finding open receivers while under pressure. That's good. How does he handle pressure? Shows the ability to quickly react and escape from pass rushers. Functional mobility. Now he's not saying he's, you know, an escape artist. Functional mobility, both in and out of the pocket, is among the best among the top 2024 20, quarterbacks at this juncture. Good stuff, y'all. Can pick up chunks of yards with his legs on design runs and scrambles. Has shown a good arm to this point, but can continue improving his velocity as he gets stronger. That's natural. It's going to happen as you, as you age, as you mature, as you get into a college weightlifting program. In addition to tightening his release, I should probably read that sentence again so it makes more sense. Has shown a good arm to this point, but can continue improving his velocity as he gets stronger in addition to tightening his release. A multi-sport athlete who also plays basketball and lacrosse. Oh, man. Good stuff. That's on three. Let me, t- let me read this to you from 247. An athletic quarterback prospect with a multi-sport background that happens to be one of the more experienced signal callers in the 2024 cycle. Not only has he posted a 29-9 and record as a starter heading into his senior season, but is also closing in on 700 live pass attempts. That's big. A lot of playing time underneath his belt. It's good. Has operated primarily... There's no T in primarily. Has operated primarily out of a single back spread attack on Friday nights and has shown plenty of command in the huddle. So he's a leader. Good stuff. Mobile and quick enough to turn a scramble into a chunk play, but looks more times than not to win from the pocket. That's what you want in your quarterback. Think about how successful Bryce Young was this year because in his ability to just elude pressure, escape, and still keep his eyes downfield. That is a tall task for a quarterback. That is a hard thing to teach and to develop, and he's doing it now. It's big time. I'm not comparing him to Bryce Young. Chill out. Has also, oh, no, 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 back up. Average arm won't blow too many away. All right, cool. But can change speeds as a passer and understands how to utilize touch. I hope Joe Milton 
is learning how to utilize touch. Has also proven to be rather accurate on the move. Important at the college level, at least when targeting the first or second level. No stranger to RPOs and is likely going to find the most success on Saturdays in a balanced offensive scheme that wants its quarterback to function almost like a point guard. All right, pause there just for a second. There's still more to read. I'm so tired of of people pointing out to me how Tennessee is just pass happy. Real quick, y'all. We're about 60-40 favoring the run. We run more than we pass. And we are a very balanced attack. Now, we find the end zone a lot right through the air. Not our fault, though. Okay. Overall should be viewed as someone that could eventually win games on Saturdays. We'll need to keep progressing and likely need some time to find his bearings at the college of his choice. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Why is that perfect? Because he's going to be behind Nico, more than likely. Nico's going to have the advantage because he's already on campus, right? Right? Different recruiting cycles, obviously. More than likely going to come in and be putting pressure on Nico for his job, but not winning it more than likely. <clears throat> All right. Solid test. Oh, no, 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 no. Back up. We'll need to keep progressing and likely need some time to find his bearings at the college of his choice. But frame measuring at six foot three, solid testing numbers has gone four, four in the shuttle and sound decision making pro process. Tossed just two interceptions as a junior. If you're listening on the podcast, you cannot see the face that I'm making now, but my eyes are very large. That's big time, y'all. That's big. That's that's like Hendon Hooker 21. Hello. These are all traits that are worth nurturing for the long haul. Big time stuff. Now, here are some thoughts on why I think he chose Tennessee, why, why Tennessee makes a lot of sense. Because your quarterback success is almost guaranteed. Think about what Hendon Hooker said in his interviews uh, heading into the NFL draft. It's not my fault my receivers were wide open. This scheme is so beneficial to the quarterback position. He, it's almost guaranteed success for quarterback. Now, quarterback, again, does shoulder a lot. But there's a high success rate in this in this scheme. But I think the biggest factor for Jake on why he chose Tennessee, when you start to read between the lines of what he said, was basically the culture that's in place in Knoxville. And I just want you to reminisce and marinate in that for a minute and think about how dark our days have been for the past two decades, losing to Wyoming on a homecoming night, 2008. Right, the departure of of Cutcliffe to Clawson and that complicated offense, and Lane Kiffin who couldn't keep his mouth shut in '09 and leaving in the middle of the night, and then Derek Dooley te teaching our players how to take a bath and having players get in fights with their position coaches, and then comes Butch Jones and 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 players are falling on helmets, and, and he's constantly screaming. And, 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 and he's and he's and he and he looked like he his face had killed somebody because he's so red and and the lies the lies and the and the and the and the people that left our program just because they talk about how how terrible the culture is and then it comes Jeremy Pruitt and he basically hires coaches to do his dirty work it's been some dark days so to hear that that quarterbacks are potentially picking us any any player. Picking us based off of our culture, man, that's high. Uh, that, that's awesome. Not real sure where I was going there with the high word. That's awesome to hear the the, the 180 flip that Coach Heupel has done in, in turning around our culture. But anyway, so I, I believe his decision has a lot to do with, with culture. Think about earlier in the week the things that Addison Nichols was saying about Joe Milton. Joe Milton's going to be the guy this year, and he's just absolutely praising Joe Milton. Now, Addison Nichols, at this point, I'm not going to say he's a nobody. He was he was highly recruited. He's going to see the field a little bit more this year, coming in at the offensive line position. Sounds like he's getting some work at center, beside the point, though. He's got no reason to praise Joe like this. Listen to what he says. Joe has done an amazing job in that leadership role. 
he will make us redo a drill if one thing isn't done right. So you've got a player-led culture. That is a sign of player-led culture. And these are the things, player-led culture are the types of things that build longevity and potential dynasties. Okay, I'm not saying we're back. I'm saying the things that are happening are the things that have to happen in order to be back. Okay, And culture is... If it's not right, it's like a cancer. So you got to get this right. And it sounds like it's right. And it sounds like Jake Merklinger has chosen us based off of our culture. And the fact that Addison Nichols is out here praising Joe Milton the way he did, that's a sign of good culture. It's a sign of good culture. Listen to some of the words that Merklinger said on basically why he chose Tennessee. And I'll try to emphasize the whole culture side of things. <clears throat> he said the quarterback development. Along with the people who are developing you. They are fun, genuine guys I can't wait to be coached by. That screams culture, listeners. Let your ears be tickled. Our culture is in a fantastic spot. It's so good right now. He says, one of the main reasons I chose Tennessee was the quarterback room. Interesting words there, Jake. He says they are all very good players, but more importantly, they are very tight with each other and have good relationships. He chose us on the, on, on the culture. Culture was a huge deal for him. I can't wait to join it and hopefully create some lifelong friendships. He says, I have an awesome relationship with Coach Heupel. He is a great guy and a very successful coach. He also was a very successful player at the position, which is good to be coached by someone who has played at a very high level. Coach Heupel is very competitive. That's what I love about him. Just want you all to bask in this for a second. And just be reminded of how dark the days have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're fresh off a, of a double-digit win season. Bask in that. We're not done. Like the offseason, say what you want to about that word, but the offseason is in full swing for us right now. Today is a victory. We won a battle today in the football world. This commitment of Jake Merklinger is big time. Now consider this. this here's a couple of names that Jake Merklinger is already being partnered with in this class. In this class, I think Jake is one of six commits for us so far in the 24 class. Merklinger is going to be joining four-star tight end Jonathan Eccles. This, is, this was a huge get for us. Huge get for us. And we all know how valuable the tight end position is in this offense. And Jonathan Eccles was being recruited by everybody. All right? So, big. That's a weapon. That's a weapon right there. He's also being, being, hang on, words, rewind. He's also joining four-star wide receiver J.J. Harrell out of Mississippi. Now, if you don't know that name, the best thing you can do when trying to figure out the recruiting class, you need to do two things. You need, you need to actually go watch their film, okay? You need, to, you need to pay attention to the area, right, that they're in. Uh, so three things, I guess. Watch the film, pay attention to the area, and pay attention to their offer list. Their offer list tells you so, so much. J.J. Harrell out of Mississippi has offers from all the big-name schools, and so does Jonathan Eccles. All the big-name schools. Bama. Here's just here, I'm just going to read you. This is not all of them. This is just a short list. Bama, Georgia, LSU, Florida State, Ole Miss, Oregon, Auburn, A&M, Florida, Arkansas, Penn State, and Deion Sanders. I mean, Colorado. Being recruited by everybody. Everybody. The guy has weapons in this class right now, today. He's got weapons. And he's going to be arriving on campus with, with guys like Squirrel White already there. With, with hopefully some, some, some progression from Caleb Webb and Chaz Nimrod, who the staff is high on. Weapons are already there. Weapons are coming with Jake Merklinger. This is big. 
Again, I'm not going to sit here and say we're back, but I will say that we are undoubtedly heading in the right direction. This is a big day for the Tennessee Volunteers. It is a this is a day worth celebrating. Now, and I don't want to like over exaggerate this or whatever, but this is a good day. Bask in this, man. Enjoy it. Th the staff has done an incredible job in our culture. And the staff, on that note, did an incredible job at the football department in last year's recruiting class in making a defensive overhaul. I made a point earlier about Nico, or excuse me, about the quarterback being a recruiter, you know, f for their own class, their own respective class. Now, Nico didn't do that so much, at least not that we know of. His, his class was so defensive heavy, but that's what needed to happen. That's what needed that. We needed that to happen. Pay it. I mean, my gosh, we were abysmal at times. We were absolutely horrendous on critical downs. Horrendous, unless, uh, um, uh, aside from the night we hosted Kentucky. <laughs> Sorry, it's me giggling on the inside. But the staff did the right thing. It's done the right thing in, 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 in establishing this culture. It did the right thing last year in, in making a defensive overhaul. It is a good day to be a Tennessee volunteer. This is a big commitment. This is a big commitment in so, so, so many ways. Hey, I appreciate you guys letting me hang out with you. I would love for you to follow us on, or for you to follow us on all the socials. You can follow me at Dan Tucker on Twitter, at DTucker06 on Instagram. Follow us on uh, Twitter on uh, for the Pandemonium Reigns account. I think it's Pandemo Reigns. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on TikTok. I try to do a decent job, you know, on the social media platforms. Or like TikTok and stuff. Mike's been mostly handling that. But I do want to say that I just appreciate you guys. We love doing this. We love uh, the, the opportunity to tickle your ears and, and, and uh, let us hang out with you. Where, whether you be in your, your drive home, from work, to work, whatever. Maybe, you know, you just need to throw on some headphones and go for a walk. And, and you chose us. We thank you so, so, so much for, for choosing us. We'd love for you to tell somebody about it. I do want to do one thing before I hop off here and just have a, a moment of silence for the tragedy that has taken place in Nashville in the school shooting. And I, as a pastor, as a father, as a husband, my heart is just absolutely broken. So we'll end this episode with a moment of silence. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you guys. God bless. Go balls. Demonium reigns.